Jeffrey Lionel Dahmer, also known as the Milwaukee Cannibal or the Milwaukee Monster, was a convicted American serial killer and sex offender who committed the murder and dismemberment of 17 men and boys between 1978 and 1991. Many of his later murders involved necrophilia, cannibalism, and the permanent preservation of body parts, typically all or part of the skeleton. Dahmer committed his first murder in 1978, three weeks after his graduation. At the time he was living alone in the family home in Bath. On June 18, Dharma picked up a hitchhiker named Stephen Mark Hicks, who was almost 19. Dharma lured the youth to his house on the pretext of the two young men drinking alcohol together. Hicks who had been hitchhiking to a rock concert at Chippewa Lake Park, Ohio, agreed to accompany Dharma to his house upon the promise of a few beers with Dharma as he had the house to himself. According to Dharma, the sight of the bare-chested Hicks standing at the roadside stirred his sexual feelings, although when Hicks began talking about girls, he knew any sexual passes he made would be rebuffed. After several hours of talking, drinking and listening to music, Hicks wanted to leave but Dharma didn't want him to. In response, Dharma bludgeoned Hicks with a 10 pounds dumbbell. He later stated he struck Hicks twice from behind with the dumbbell as Hicks sat upon a chair. When Hicks fell unconscious, Dharma strangled him to death with the bar of the dumbbell, then stripped the clothes from Hicks' body before exploring his chest with his hands, then masturbating as he stood above the corpse. The following day, Dharma dissected Hicks' body in his basement, he later buried the remains in a shallow grave in his backyard before several weeks later, unearthing the remains and paring the flesh from the bones. He dissolved the flesh in acid before flushing the solution down the toilet, he crushed the bones with a sledgehammer and scattered them in the woodland behind the family home. On November 20, 1987, Dharma killed Stephen Walter Tuomi aged 25, in a rented room at the Ambassador Hotel in Milwaukee. Dharma claimed to have no memory of murdering Tuomi, yet stated he must have battered him to death in a drunken stupor. His body was dismembered in the basement of Dharma's grandmother's house and the remains discarded in the trash. No remains were ever found. On January 16, 1988, James Edward Dockstater, aged 14, met Dharma outside a gay bar in Wisconsin. Dockstater was lured to West Alice on the pretext of earning $50 for posing for nude pictures. Dharma strangled Dockstater and kept his body in the basement for a week before dismembering him and discarding the remains in the trash. No remains were ever found. On March 24, 1988, Richard Guerrero, aged 22 was drugged and strangled in Dharma's bedroom at West Alice. Dharma dismembered Guerrero's corpse in the basement, dissolved the flesh in acid and disposed of the bones in the trash. He bleached and retained the skull for several months before disposing of it, no remains were ever found. On March 25, 1989, Anthony Lee Sears, aged 24, was the last victim to be drugged and strangled at Dharma's grandmother's residence, he was also the first victim from whom Dharma permanently retained any body parts. His preserved skull and genitals were found in a filing cabinet at 924 North 25th Street following Dharma's arrest in 1991. On May 20, 1990, Raymond Lamont Smith, also known as Ricky Beeks, aged 32, was the first victim to be killed at Dharma's North 25th Street apartment. Smith was a male sex worker whom Dharma encountered at a tavern. Dharma gave Smith a drink laced with sleeping pills, then strangled him on his kitchen floor. His skull was spray painted and retained. On June 14, 1990, Dharma's next victim was Edward Warren Smith, age 27, a known acquaintance of Dharma who was last seen in his company at a party. Dharma acidified Smith's skeleton. His skull was destroyed unintentionally when placed in the oven in an effort to remove moisture. No remains were ever found. On September 2, 1990, Dharma murdered Ernest Marquez Miller, aged 22. Miller was a dance student whom Dharma encountered outside a bookstore. According to Dharma, he was especially attracted to Miller's physique. He was killed by having his carotid artery severed before being dismembered in the bathtub, with Dharma storing his entire skeleton in the bottom drawer of a filing cabinet and his heart, biceps, and portions of his legs in the freezer for later consumption. On September 24, 1990, David Courtney Thomas, age 22, encountered Dharma near the Grand Avenue Mall. He was lured to Dharma's apartment on the promise of money for posing nude. 
Once a laced drink had rendered Thomas unconscious, Dharma decided he wasn't his type. Nonetheless, Dharma strangled Thomas, taking Polaroid photos of the dismemberment process. No remains were ever found. On February 18, 1991, Curtis Durrell Strauter, aged 17, was approached by Dharma as he waited at a bus stop near Marquette University. Dharma lured Strauter to his apartment, where the youth was drugged, and then handcuffed and strangled before being dismembered in the bathtub. His skull, hands, and genitals were retained. On April 7, 1991, Errol Lindsay, aged 19, was the first victim upon whom Dharma practiced what he later described to investigators as his drilling technique, a procedure in which he drilled holes into the victim's skull, through which he injected hydrochloric acid into the brain. According to Dharma, Lindsay awoke after this practice, after which he was again rendered unconscious with a drink laced with sedatives, then strangled to death. Dharma flayed Lindsay's body and retained the skin for several weeks. His skull was found following Dharma's arrest. On May 24, 1991, Dharma met Tony Anthony Hughes aged 31. Hughes was a deaf mute whom Dharma lured to his apartment upon the promise of posing nude for photographs. As Hughes was deaf, he and Dharma communicated using handwritten notes. He was strangled and his body left on Dharma's bedroom floor for three days before being dismembered, with Dharma photographing the dismemberment process. His skull was retained and identified from dental records. On May 27, 1991 Dharma encountered Conorak Synthesomphone aged 14, the younger brother of the boy Dharma had assaulted in 1988. Synthesomphone was drugged and had hydrochloric acid injected into his brain before Dharma left the youth unattended as he left the apartment to purchase beer. When he returned, he discovered Synthesomphone naked and disoriented in the street, with three distressed young women attempting to assist him. When police arrived, Dharma persuaded them he and Synthesomphone were lovers and that the youth was simply intoxicated. When police left Synthesomphone with Dharma in his apartment, Dharma again injected hydrochloric acid into Synthesomphone's brain, and this proved fatal. His head was retained in the freezer and his body dismembered. On June 30, 1991, Dharma attended the Chicago Pride Parade. At a bus stop, he encountered a 20-year-old named Matt Turner and persuaded him to accompany him to Milwaukee to pose for a photo shoot. Turner was drugged, strangled, and then dismembered in the bathtub. His head and internal organs were put in the freezer and his torso subsequently placed in the 57-gallon drum Dharma purchased on July 12. On July 5, 1991, Jeremiah Benjamin Weinberger, aged 23, met Dharma at a gay bar in Chicago and agreed to accompany him to Milwaukee for the weekend. Dharma drilled through Weinberger's skull and injected boiling water into the cavity. He later recalled Weinberger's death to be exceptional, as he was the only victim who died with his eyes open. Weinberger's decapitated body was kept in the bathtub for a week before being dismembered, his torso was placed in the 57-gallon drum. On July 15, 1991, Dharma lured Oliver Joseph Lacey, age 24, a bodybuilding enthusiast on the promise of money for posing for photographs. Lacey was drugged and strangled with a leather strap before being decapitated, with his head and heart being placed in the refrigerator. His skeleton was retained to adorn one side of the private shrine of skulls and skeletons Dharma was in the process of creating when arrested one week later. On July 19, 1991, Dharma killed his last victim Joseph Arthur Braidhoft aged 25. Braidhoft was a father of three children from Minnesota who was looking for work in Milwaukee at the time of his murder. He was left on Dharma's bed for two days following his murder and then his body was decapitated. His head was placed in the refrigerator and his torso in the 57-gallon drum. On July 22, 1991, Dharma approached three men with an offer of $100 to accompany him to his apartment to pose for nude photographs, drink beer and simply keep him company. One of the trio, 32-year-old Tracy Edwards, agreed to accompany him to his apartment. Upon entering Dharma's apartment, Edwards noted a foul odor and several boxes of hydrochloric acid on the floor, which Dharma claimed to use for cleaning bricks. After some minor conversation, Edwards responded to Dharma's request to turn his head and view his tropical fish, whereupon Dharma placed a handcuff upon his wrist. When Edwards asked, what's happening? 
Dahmer unsuccessfully attempted to cuff his wrists together, then told Edwards to accompany him to the bedroom to pose for nude pictures. While inside the bedroom, Edwards noted nude male posters on the wall and that a videotape of The Exorcist 3 was playing. He also noted a blue 57-gallon drum in the corner, from which a strong odor emanated. Dahmer then brandished a knife and informed Edwards he intended to take nude pictures of him. In an attempt to appease Dharma, Edwards unbuttoned his shirt, saying he would allow him to do so if he would remove the handcuffs and put the knife away. In response to this promise, Dharma simply turned his attention towards the TV. Edwards observed Dharma rocking back and forth and chanting before turning his attention back to him. He placed his head on Edwards' chest, listened to his heartbeat and, with the knife pressed against his intended victim, informed Edwards he intended to eat his heart. In continuous attempts to prevent Dharma from attacking him, Edwards repeated that he was Dharma's friend and that he was not going to run away. Edwards had decided he was going to either jump from a window or run through the unlocked front door upon the next available opportunity. When Edwards next stated he needed to use the bathroom, he asked if they could sit with a beer in the living room, where there was air conditioning. Dharma consented, and the pair walked to the living room when Edwards exited the bathroom. Inside the living room, Edwards waited until he observed Dharma have a momentary lapse of concentration before requesting to use the bathroom again. When Edwards rose from the couch, he noted Dharma was not holding the handcuffs, whereupon Edwards punched him in the face, knocking Dharma off balance, and ran out the front door. At 11.30 p.m. on July 22, Edwards flagged down two Milwaukee police officers, Robert Roth and Rolf Mueller, at the corner of North 25th Street. The officers noted Edwards had a handcuff attached to his wrist, whereupon he explained to the officers that a freak had placed the handcuffs upon him and asked if the police could remove them. When the officer's handcuff keys failed to fit the brand of handcuffs, Edwards agreed to accompany the officers to the apartment where, Edwards stated, he had spent the previous five hours before escaping. When the officers and Edwards arrived at apartment 213, Dharma invited the trio inside and acknowledged he had indeed placed the handcuffs upon Edwards, although he offered no explanation as to why he had done so. At this point, Edwards divulged to the officers that Dharma had also brandished a large knife upon him and that this had happened in the bedroom. Dharma made no comment to this revelation, indicating to one of the officers, Mueller, that the key to the handcuffs was in his bedside dresser. As Mueller entered the bedroom, Dharma attempted to pass Mueller to himself retrieve the key, whereupon the second officer present, Roth, informed him to back off. In the bedroom, Mueller noted there was indeed a large knife beneath the bed. He also saw an open drawer which upon closer inspection, contained scores of Polaroid pictures, many of which were of human bodies in various stages of dismemberment. Mueller noted the decor indicated they had been taken in the very apartment in which they were standing. Mueller walked into the living room to show them to his partner, uttering the words, these are for real. When Dharma saw that Mueller was holding several of his Polaroids, he fought with the officers in an effort to resist arrest. The officers quickly overpowered him, cuffed his hands behind his back, and called a second squad car for backup. At this point, Mueller opened the refrigerator to reveal the freshly severed head of a black male on the bottom shelf. As Dharma lay pinned on the floor beneath Roth, he turned his head towards the officers and muttered the words, For what I did I should be dead. A more detailed search of the apartment, conducted by the Milwaukee Police's Criminal Investigation Bureau, revealed a total of four severed heads in Dharma's kitchen. A total of seven skulls, some painted, some bleached, were found in Dharma's bedroom and inside a closet. In addition, investigators discovered collected blood drippings upon a tray at the bottom of Dharma's refrigerator, plus two human hearts and a portion of arm muscle, each wrapped inside plastic bags upon the shelves. In Dharma's freezer, investigators discovered an entire torso, plus a bag of human organs and flesh stuck to the ice at the bottom. Elsewhere in apartment 213, investigators discovered two entire skeletons, a pair of severed hands, two severed and preserved penises, a mummified scalp and, in the 57-gallon drum, three further dismembered torsos dissolving in the acid solution. A total of 74 Polaroid pictures detailing the dismemberment of Dharma's victims were found. 
in reference to the recovery of body parts and artifacts at 924 North 25th Street, the chief medical examiner later stated, it was more like dismantling someone's museum than an actual crime scene. Beginning in the early hours of July 23, 1991, Dharma was questioned by Detective Patrick Kennedy as to the murders he had committed and the evidence found at his apartment. Over the following two weeks, Kennedy and, later, Detective Dennis Murphy conducted numerous interviews with Dharma which when combined totaled over 60 hours. Dharma waived his right to have a lawyer present throughout his interrogations, adding he wished to confess all as he had, created this horror and it only makes sense I do everything to put an end to it. He readily admitted to having murdered 16 young men in Wisconsin since 1987, with one further victim, Stephen Hicks, killed in Ohio back in 1978. Dharma readily admitted to engaging in necrophilia with several of his victims' bodies, including performing sexual acts with their viscera as he dismembered their bodies in his bathtub. Having noted that much of the blood pooled inside his victims' chest after death, Dharma first removed their internal organs, then suspended the torso so the blood drained into his bathtub, before dicing any organs he did not wish to retain and paring the flesh from the body. The bones he wished to dispose of were pulverized or acidified, with soilix and bleach solutions used to aid in the preservation of the skeletons and skulls he wished to keep. In addition, Dharma confessed to having consumed the hearts, livers, biceps, and portions of thighs of several victims killed within the previous year. Describing the increase in his rate of killing in the two months prior to his arrest, Dharma stated he had been completely swept along with his compulsion to kill, adding, it was an incessant and never-ending desire to be with someone at whatever cost. Someone good-looking, really nice-looking. It just filled my thoughts all day long. When asked as to why he had preserved a total of seven skulls and the entire skeletons of two victims, Dharma stated he had been in the process of constructing a private altar of victims' skulls which he had intended to display on the black table located in his living room and upon which he had photographed the bodies of many of his victims. When asked in a November 18, 1991 interview, whom the altar was dedicated to, Dharma replied, myself, it was a place where I could feel at home. He further described his intended altar as a place for meditation, from where he believed he could draw a sense of power, adding, if this had happened six months later, that's what they would have found. On July 25, 1991, Dharma was charged with four counts of first-degree murder. By August 22, he had been charged with a further 11 murders committed in Wisconsin. On September 14, investigators in Ohio, having uncovered hundreds of bone fragments in woodland behind the address in which Dharma had confessed to killing his first victim, formally identified two molars and a vertebra with X-ray records of Hicks. Three days later, Dharma was charged by authorities in Ohio with Hicks's murder. Dharma was not charged with the attempted murder of Edwards, nor with the murder of Tuomi. He was not charged with Tuomi's murder because the Milwaukee County District Attorney only brought charges where murder could be proven beyond a reasonable doubt and Dharma had no memory of actually committing this particular murder, for which no physical evidence of the crime existed. At a scheduled preliminary hearing on January 13, 1992, Dharma pleaded guilty but insane to 15 counts of murder. Dharma was then sentenced to life imprisonment plus 10 years upon the first two counts, with the remaining 13 counts carrying a mandatory sentence of life imprisonment plus 70 years. The death penalty was not an option for Judge Graham to consider at the penalty phase, as Wisconsin had abolished capital punishment in 1853. Three months after his conviction in Milwaukee, Dharma was extradited to Ohio to be tried for the murder of his first victim, Stephen Hicks. In a court hearing lasting just 45 minutes, Dharma again pleaded guilty to the charges and was sentenced to a 16th term of life imprisonment on May 1, 1992. Upon sentencing, Dharma was transferred to the Columbia Correctional Institution. For the first year of his incarceration, Dharma was placed in solitary confinement due to concerns for his physical safety should he come into contact with fellow inmates. With Dharma's consent, after one year in solitary confinement, he was transferred to a less secure unit, where he was assigned a two-hour daily work detail cleaning the toilet block. 
In July 1994, a fellow inmate, Osvaldo Duradi, attempted to slash Dharma's throat with a razor embedded in a toothbrush as Dharma returned to his cell from Ratcliffe's weekly church service conducted in the prison chapel. Dharma received superficial wounds and was not seriously hurt in this incident. According to Dharma's family, he had long been ready to die, and accepted any punishment which he might endure in prison. On the morning of November 28, 1994, Dharma left his cell to conduct his assigned work detail. Accompanying him were two fellow inmates, Jesse Anderson and Christopher Scarva. The trio were left unsupervised in the showers of the prison gym for approximately 20 minutes. At approximately 8.10 a.m., Dharma was discovered on the floor of the bathrooms of the gym suffering from extreme head wounds. He had been severely bludgeoned about the head and face with a 20-inch metal bar. His head had also been repeatedly struck against the wall in the assault. Although Dharma was still alive and was rushed to a nearby hospital, he was pronounced dead one hour later. Anderson had also been beaten with the same instrument, and died two days later from his wounds. Scarva, who was serving a life sentence for a murder committed in 1990, informed authorities he had first attacked Dharma with the metal bar as Dharma was cleaning a staff locker room, before attacking Anderson as he cleaned an inmate locker room. According to Scarva, Dharma did not yell or make any noise as he was attacked. Immediately after attacking both men, Scarva, who was thought to be schizophrenic, returned to his cell and informed a prison guard, God told me to do it. Jesse Anderson and Jeffrey Dharma are dead. Scarva was adamant he had not planned the attacks in advance, although he later divulged to investigators he had concealed the 20-inch iron bar used to kill both men in his clothing shortly before the killings. Scarva alleges that immediately before murdering Dharma, he had cornered him, presented a newspaper article detailing Dharma's crimes, and demanded that Dharma answer whether the account was true. Scarva further alleged he had been revolted by Dharma's crimes and that Dharma had been openly unrepentant. And that Dharma taunted prison employees and fellow inmates by shaping his prison food into imitations of severed limbs, complete with ketchup to simulate blood spattering and that prison staff, knowing of Scarva's hatred for Dharma, had deliberately left the two men unsupervised so that he could kill him. Furthermore, Scarva stated that Dharma was so disliked by fellow inmates that he required a personal escort of at least one guard whenever he was out of his cell to prevent inmates from attacking him. Dharma had stated in his will that he wished for no services to be conducted and that he wished to be cremated. In September 1995, Dharma's body was cremated, and his ashes divided between his parents. Thanks for watching. For more videos please click like and subscribe.